Biathlon is an Olympic sport that combines rifle shooting and cross-country skiing. As you can see here, it's popular in Germany, and it's the number one televised winter sport in Europe. But today, it's an American that's making headlines. U.S. Olympic biathlete Tim Burke, here in the blue, is having a strong day at a World Cup competition. America has never won an Olympic biathlon medal, but this year, Burke is giving the Europeans a serious challenge. We'll explain more later, but what you need to know right now is that Burke has hit all his targets and is off to grab an impressive second place finish in this race. To see how he trains, a few months ago we caught up with Tim and his teammates at the Soldier Hollow training grounds just outside of Heber, Utah. I try to go into a race knowing that I've done everything that I possibly can do in practice. I like going up to the start line knowing, you know what, I worked as hard as I could, I put in all the work, I'm ready to go. That's how I get my confidence before a race, knowing that I've prepared to my absolute best. Tim isn't kidding about preparation. This practice was one of the most excruciating we witnessed in this Olympic series. It's just about dawn here, and for the next few hours, just filming their morning practice will be a challenge. First up is shooting. These guns are not about power, they're about precision. The small ammo cartridges will challenge the athletes to hit their targets in any kind of weather. It's a little bit like trying to thread a needle in a snowstorm with a stadium full of screaming fans, a press ring of photographers, and the suffocating pressure of making the perfect shot. I think the hardest part is actually the mindset. Um, you have to switch from being a skier to a shooter, two completely different sports. When you're out on the ski course, you know, you're fighting for every second, and when you come into the shooting range, you need to, to turn that down, relax, get control of your breathing, and uh, really have a high focus. While gliding into the shooting range on skis, their heartbeats can top out at 180 beats per minute, and holding still at that point is not easy. If you watch Jeremy Tila, also on the U.S. Olympic team this year, you can see how the athletes use precise, controlled breathing while shooting. You'd be surprised how many thoughts you can have in the 25 seconds you're up there shooting. How many thoughts you can have in between shots. I thought, oh, if I, if I hit this shot, I'm going to probably be in the top 10. Oh, if I hit this next one, I'll probably get on the podium. So once you start focusing on the result, it usually doesn't happen. But by focusing on the actual process, then usually the result comes. Biathlon started as a Scandinavian military exercise, so it makes sense that the coaches run training with military-like efficiency. And then starts the wrestle. The wrestle has 37.0. You have a pretty international uh, coaching staff. Yeah. Kind of talk about having such a European influence on, on your sport. I think it's really good for our team. We always joke on our team that the only Americans on the team are the actual athletes. <laughs> But having coaches and staff from all over the world, I think, helps bring a different perspectives that we maybe wouldn't see if we had a U.S. staff. Five hits, two prone hits, feel up. Their zen-like focus doesn't stop at the shooting range. In an endurance sport, the mental component is crucial to keep yourself fighting at that pace. For me, it's really important to have a few specific cues that I'm working on. So for me, on the ski course, that would be technical things. Like if I'm on the flats, maybe I'm, I'm thinking about um, my arm angle coming up for the pulling position. On the climbing, maybe I'm thinking more about the placement of my feet. But it's really important to have something to think about at every point. If I don't have those things to focus on, sometimes it's really easy to let your mind kind of wander. During our filming, they covered about 18 miles on roller skis. And since we couldn't keep up, we let them take the camera for a spin. Show you the loop and hopefully give you a little bit of insight onto the big downhill here. Bathlon is such a great sport because at the starting line, there might be 50 guys who have a legitimate shot at winning the race that day. I don't think there's any other sport around where it's like that. The leads can change so quickly. Someone can be in the lead of a race until the last shooting stage, until the last shot, and can go from first place to 20th place in a split second of a bad shot. A somewhat humiliating aspect of biathlon is that if you miss your shooting targets, you have to do a lap around a 150 meter penalty loop and watch your competitors leave you behind. It's a bad place. It's like when you're a kid and your parents need to go sit in the corner after time doing something out. bad. <laughs> it is a time out. And everyone gets to see you in there, yeah, it's, it's no fun. So definitely try to hit all your targets. I had to give the trigger a try but I soon realized these were seriously tiny targets. In the prone position, you are trying to hit an area that's less than two inches wide 
from 50 meters away. And in the standing position, it's not much bigger. The target is only four and a half inches wide. After propping up my gun on a cardboard box, I had a little bit of luck. Right. Yeah, see, it turned white. Nailed it. You got it. And the thing about what you guys are doing, you not only have to shoot accurately, you have to shoot fast. Yeah, for us in uh, shooting from prone in a lying down position, you really need to be shooting in around 30 seconds or under to be uh, world class. In standing, you need to be shooting around 25 seconds, and that's, you know, that time's for five shots, so. Ooh. <laughs> that missed by a lot. <laughs> that's it. That look, was out, a, look out for the highway. That there. was a sound you don't normally hear, but. <laughs> After I quit goofing around, I totally realized how good these guys are. In the whole day of shooting, Tim only missed one target. Yeah, we have a stronger team than ever. We can definitely compete with the best in the world. We do it all year long on the World Cup for the past few seasons. So there's absolutely no reason why we can't win Vancouver. Tim was gracious with his time, but he was also happy to have this interview over with. He was starving. These athletes scarf down about 5,000 calories a day. And today he'll eat breakfast, two lunches, two dinners, and fruit, snacks, and cereal throughout the day. In between his double lunch, he'll even take an afternoon nap, and it's well deserved, because in a few hours, he'll be back here at Soldier Hollow to ski another 15 miles. Believe it or not, he has to do it all over again. This is Sean Gregory reporting for Time.com.